One of the newer features inside of Revit, and we're talking just over the last handful of years, is the ability to do things like path analysis directly inside of the tool set whilst you're modeling. This is really good to start visualizing escape routes or path of travel throughout a building as you're working. And actually it works really easily, it's just a handful of clicks. So if I start a brand new file inside of Revit and just throw down some really basic geometry to determine um, a space and a, um, a building, we'll just go with some external walls, um, we'll place in a couple of internal walls in here, doesn't really matter what type we use, maybe let's have a, a long corridor there. Perhaps that long corridor splits off into uh, a few different individual rooms like so. Uh, and then maybe we've got a couple of other rooms in the corner like so and something like that. There we go. What we're then going to do is place some doors so that people can actually get through the building. So let's place uh, a door here and then maybe another door just here. Let's place some internal doors. So let's have one here, 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 uh, one there, one there, and another one there. Under the Analyze tab, I have Route Analysis. And it's as simple as this. We choose Path of Travel. And when we click Path of Travel, um, firstly, we can control the line style that we want and we can choose whether or not we want to tag it. Um, but literally I come in and just choose where I'm traveling from and to. So I start point. So I can go from any location in the room. So maybe I want to look at traveling from this room here to outside the building here. And it will do a path of travel. If I just undo that and say this room here to, oops, somewhere over there, again, it's going to do the, the, the best route or the, the quickest route that it can based on where you're clicking. And what it will do is it will start giving me routes of travel using the fact that it knows where the doors are and it knows where it can get in and out of the building. It's gonna start determining um, those travel paths for you. Each one of those paths can be selected and you can start drilling down into the length of the path, um, the time and the speed, and you can start to get an appreciation of how long it should take a typical person to um, either escape from the building or, or go from A to B. And obviously all of that is customizable and tweakable for different configurations or, or different types of abilities as you may or may not need to. Once you've got those, um, those paths, you can start looking at or interrogating things. So I can say, well, show me all of the different obstacles and it will start highlighting the obstacles that we have around the building. And as I start um, adding more information in, for example, if I um, draw in another wall just here, or if I place in a component just, oops, place in another component just here, if I grab our um, any one of these lines, I can basically hit update. And what Revit will do is it will look at the new information it has and it will update those components or those paths based on that new information because it now knows that it has more obstacles around the building. And again, that's a live consistently updating thing. We can model a family to represent a person and have that family have um, a, a, a necessary size. So for example, if you've got a wheelchair, you can model the, the required turning circle of that wheelchair and use that for those routes to make sure that that individual can successfully and safely get their way through the building um, and take into account accessible doors, perhaps versus some non-accessible doors to identify that there are clear paths of travel for everyone that you may have within your building. You can also tag these components um, and you can also define one-way areas to make sure that Revit avoids those routes. Simply put, we can add paths of travel and analyze those paths of travel directly from inside our modeling software. We don't have to rely on going out to another validation tool to run a check to then have to come back in here to fix something. We can get an appreciation of those paths of travel directly inside of Revit and then change our design and make different decisions 
based on the outputs that it's giving us.